input to our program. How are we going to control the character? What controls are we going to have? Well, the way I see it, spaceship's got to move. That's going to happen with this guy. Um, spaceship's got to fire. Fire one, fire two, and some controls for throttle. And I think I'll use like Z, X, and C. Here's one thing I discovered about Just Basic. You know how, um, like when you hold down a key, you want to type a bunch of the same letter? It types one first, waits like half a second, and then does a whole bunch. Uh, let me illustrate. Let me just open up uh, Microsoft Word here. And uh, let's say I wanted to type, ah! So I hit A, A, oh, and there's the rest of it. Maybe that wasn't the best example. But usually when you're programming games, when you hold down a key, you want it to just continue that cycle. You don't want it to just activate once, wait a sec, and then activate a bunch of times. And I haven't figured out a way around this yet. Maybe it's a, a matter of just basic versus liberty basic. I don't know. There's a lot of things like that. If you want to shell out like what, 50 bucks for Liberty Basic, you can usually do more things. But maybe not. Maybe it's just something simple that I'm overlooking. And if any of you guys who are watching this knows how to do it, tell me. Well, then I would be very grateful. But anyway, so I'm only going to have like three tiers of, of uh, throttle, and that's all I'll use for keyboard input. And uh, let's get started with that. Uh, and it goes up into um, all these commands that are given at the beginning of the program. So whenever, when there is a character input, then we'll go to this branch label, what should we call it? Well, I'm pretty sure the only keyboard input I'm going to have is for the throttle, but just in case there's anything else, I'll just go with the more generic key check to see what, what key is actually depressed. Can you see, stop taking antidepressants. And then for the mouse, uh, when left Left button move go to fire one. When right button move go to fire two. And by the way, my idea for these is for fire one, it's just like a sort of machine gun thing shooting out the front. Fire two probably will be a, like a lock on missile, so if you can hover over your target for a couple of seconds, it'll the reticule will change colors and fire, and it'll track the, the target. And finally, just for moving when mouse move with whether there are no buttons pressed or not then go to let's see what shall we call actually we don't need this one now that I think about it because remember the way we set up these games is that it loops through uh, some cyclic loop over and over again with a refresh rate of, well, depending, I usually use 50 milliseconds. And uh, it'll just automatically read the variables mouse X and mouse Y. We can just put those in there. We're not going to have to have it specifically go there whenever the mouse moves. It's just going to automatically sense mouse X, mouse Y. 
So this is all we need for for sensing input. I'm going to go ahead and put some of these labels down here. First we're going to have, um, let's say, main loop weight key tech weight fire one weight and finally fire two weight so off to a dazzling stop here and next time we'll actually get into making the sprites and hopefully we'll get into the meat of the program and we'll start seeing it take shape. In the meantime, just check to make sure everything looks good for now. This is pretty much what we have. Just a, an empty graphics window. Oh, hang on, I'm getting a call. Assorted games at my place, whenever. <laughs> sort of vague. Anyway, stay tuned.